Hello, this is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com, and today we're going to be talking about subexposure lengths. I decided to try another experiment and I took 180 10 second exposures which comes out to 30 minutes and then I took six five minute exposures and I took three 10 minute exposures. The reason that I went as low as 10 second exposures is because a lot of people are beginners and they're using small trackers, uh, they're not guided. And for them, a 10 second exposure isn't something that's unrealistic. So I've loaded up some individual shots. This is a single 10 second exposure that you're looking at of the North American Nebula. You can very faintly make the nebula out. These were all done in HA as well. So if you're using a, a one shot color, uh, DSLR, modified or unmodified, um, you should actually even get more than what you're seeing here and with an HA. I decided to try and use HA because this particular target is, is loaded with hydrogen alpha and so I thought that it would be a more stunning comparison. So this is 10 seconds. This is 300 seconds for 5 minutes. This one, you could really start to see the wall throughout here and some of the Pelican Nebula as well over here. And this is a 600 seconds or 10 minute exposure. It's not a whole lot different and you'll see satellites and planes a lot more in your 10 minute exposures because you're giving them a lot more time to show up through your frame. I do see a lot more detail in the wall and over here in the Pelican Nebula than I did with the five second one shot. But now let's see what they look like when we stack them all together. So this is going to be a total integration time of 30 minutes but with 10 second exposures. And to be completely honest, uh, this doesn't even compare, in my opinion, with a single five minute exposure, although it's a lot less noisy. But the detail is, is really washed out in comparison. But again, this is 10 second exposures. And we're gonna look at the five minute exposures with a total integration time of 30 minutes as well. And we could see that there's a lot more detail. And let's compare it with the 10 minute exposures. So these are three 10 minute exposures combined. These are six five minute exposures. We could easily tell that the 30 minutes of 10 second exposures just isn't going to work for us. But I find this quite interesting. In comparing these two, the, the one with the five minute exposures actually looks a little better to me than the 10 minute exposure one. And that could just be because there's only three sub exposures in this one. And I know that sub exposures have a lot to do with it. And the more shots you have that you stack, the cleaner your image is going to be. We're going to zoom into the wall area. and compare this. And you'll notice something a little strange uh, compared to what I just said where the more exposures you have the cleaner your image. In this particular image the exposure with 10 minutes looks a lot cleaner 
than with five minutes. And I want to say that this is due to the fact that in order to swamp the read noise for my particular camera, I need to expose much longer than five minutes. And so I'm going to get a cleaner image even with less sub exposures when I expose for a longer amount of time. Finally, I'd like to show you a table that I found in Cloudy Nights Forum where this poster here has taken the time to run a spreadsheet for my particular camera that I use, the ASI 1600, and run some charts to show the optimal exposure time for my camera using narrowband filtering such as I've done for this video. At gain 200, which is what I've used, and with my current F number at just below F6 with my flattener on my telescope, I would need to image for 28 minute sub exposures to get the op optimal sub exposure. So I'm less than two and a half times away on this exposure, and I'm five times away on this exposure. I don't think that 28 minute sub exposures are realistic for me. So when I have a moonless night, I pretty much just use 600 second, 10 minute exposures. And when the moon is half or brighter, I jump to 300 second or five minute exposures. I don't really go in between that because it makes it more difficult to have a dark library. So basically what it comes down to is, is that the exposure length is going to be gear dependent. And so depending on your gear, a 10 second exposure might actually be correct. But I think for my gear, I'll never hit the optimal exposure because I'm unable to take 28 minute long exposures. And even if I could take a 28 minute long exposure, I probably wouldn't just because of the fact that clouds and other things could move in and cause too many issues. Best thing to do is just watch your exposures, look at your histogram, make sure that the histogram isn't too far to the left um, or to the right, just about a quarter away from the left side and you should be fine. If you really want to learn more about this, I'll put a link in the description below and also the formula for calculating uh, swamping your camera read noise. I hope you found this useful and if you did please leave a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.